Hey guys and welcome to my channel. In this video, um, I want to talk more about the new supply. I'm looking at the statistics for my channel and I do see that the videos that, um, you know, talk about the new supply, they're getting the most views. So people are seeking answers and more clarification in this area. So let's talk about it some more. Um, you know, <laughs> When you break up with someone, it's not uncommon. You know, it's pretty normal to want to, especially when they rebound or seemingly rebound into another relationship right away. We're curious, like, who is this person? Where did they come from? What makes this person different from me? So we're looking to see, you know, how, how do you guys differ physically and you may be on social media. Well, what do they do for a living or, you know, what's going on in their life? Why now is the narcissist with this person? This is very normal guys. Um, so, you know, don't beat yourself up if you had, you know, a stage in your recovery process or if you're in that stage right now. But what you need to understand about the narcissist is, you know, they're just, they're just going for supply. And sometimes when there's a discard, it's, it may not, they may not have wanted to have to discard you because they like the supply that they were getting from you, but you were getting too smart. They knew that they had to discard you or you had to discard them because you were, you caught on to them. So that changed the supply that you were able to give them. And they may not even have had an adequate supply lined up or maybe they feel like they did. But it was it was purely about the supply. So when we're looking at this new person and we're like, well, oh, she seems prettier than me or something or she's not. Or if you, in your eyes, she's not prettier than you. The narcissist is not really looking at those type of things the way that we are. Because their whole agenda and their motive is not what a typical guy that's not narcissistic is going for. I mean, if the supply can be, if the supplier of the supply can be beautiful at the same time, oh, those are brownie points. But the narcissist just cares about the supply. And that's why if you line up all the people that the narcissist was with, you won't even really find a lot of commonality in the physical appearance because they're not stuck on that. They just care about the supply. And that's why people are so interchangeable. They're not getting attached to the person. So the vessel in which the supply is flowing through is like whatever to them. Because when they're having sex, they're they're making love to the supply, not even the person. They're like securing the supply, whatever they want from out of that individual. You know, so we rack our brains sometimes focusing on the wrong things, you know, forgetting that we're dealing with a narcissist. Yeah, there may be a guy out there that's not narcissistic that can leave a woman for another woman he perceives is more beautiful. But that's not necessarily what the narcissist is doing. They're just wanting more supplies. So that person could make more money, perhaps, um, <clears throat> could have more notoriety, could have more connections in the world to uh, further the narcissist agenda. Or if the discard was um, off time, off timing with the narcissist, meaning you discarded them or you found them out before they never want you to find them out, but it happened quicker than they thought it would. Then they just have to upgrade that secondary supply, whoever it is, whether they're better than you, uh, provide more than you for the narcissist or not. They just grab him for something because they might be homeless at this situation. I mean, they need somewhere to stay. Shoot, I seen who my uh, former narcissist ended up with. And it was not an upgrade. <laughs> It certainly wasn't an upgrade, but it did prevent him from, you know, being homeless. So, but, um, yeah, it just seems like people are really, really, um, fixated on the, um, 
the narcissist new supply. There's all, you know, something else that I would like to point out because people are just like, oh, she's glowing. She's happy. And it kind of, you know, exaggerates our, our misconception that, you know, this person is now in this perfect Cinderella <laughs> fairy tale and, and everything is all good now that they're not with you they found this other person who they match perfectly with and, and now they're going to just skip down the yellow brick road and and everything is happily ever after the whole thing is you have to understand in the beginning this new supply does still have that that glisten in her eyes because it's new the narcissist has not been able to extract from her life source the way that he did with you by the end of the relationship. Give her more time. Give her more time and she will begin to look more tired. She will begin to look more stressed and worn out. She will begin to age because this narcissist is going to suck the life out of her the longer she is with him. You know, I have to admit it. Um, I I did watch the new supply social media for a little while in my healing process. And I stopped actually watching my narcissist profile because, you know, my narcissist, just like um, most lower level narcissists, they just become whatever their new supply is. So at that point, it doesn't even matter what he's putting on his page. If I want to know what he, what uh, he's doing, all I had to do was look on her page. She's going to keep me up to date with everything because whatever her life is centered around, that's what his life is now centered around. They're like chameleons in that way. And that's why they morph. They morph for each new supply to mirror back Um the new supply to themselves so they're falling in love with themselves you know so all of her hobbies and and things now they're his hobbies even if they weren't with the previous supply he's customing that customizing it for the next person but yeah she was glistening but then I noticed that she had went through several cycles with him in a very short amount of time because all those other supplies, she found out about them. She even called me at like 6.30 in the morning crying about this because she had took the uh, magic beans from him and she thought he was one thing, moved him into her house like overnight. And she was feeling stupid about that because she was very desperate I mean, my ex narc, he tried to hoover me so many times, sending me messages that she sent him, denying her, not knowing that I know that he lives under her roof and everything, denying the relationship, denying the seriousness of it. And in the messages, she was literally on her hands and knees begging the narcissist not to leave because she couldn't, could not be alone. That's her problem. She couldn't be alone. After reading those messages, this woman is severely with low self-esteem and she can't be alone. She's afraid of it. She's an older woman. Someone's great grandma. Like she, she really has a fear of being alone. And he manipulates, manipulates her and exploits her for that. And she's fine with that. I guess the trade off of her not being alone or feeling like she's alone. But she is alone because he's not really there. You know, she's not really there. He's still all over the place. And when these other women approach her, she just blames the other women because that's her denial of not wanting to be alone. But this, I say all of this to say the new supply doesn't have it better. We think she does. And she looks so happy in the beginning. And she is because she's, she's um, in that love bomb stage. <laughs> but catch her a few cycles in. A few discards later and whatever happiness she's showing it's a front for the world deep inside she is very stressed out and she's caught up in a toxic cycle now depending on how toxic she is will depend on how long she stays the longer she doesn't do the work to not be able to be by herself she will she could end up taking this for the rest of her life until he find you know he might end it for her if he find better supply and dump her and put her out of her misery 
She thinks she won't be being put out of her misery, and that's the sickness. There's sickness on both sides. You know, so don't get caught up in how happy and, and glistening and shiny and brand new that she feels in the beginning. It's the beginning. Let him start doing his operations. Even if she was the secondary source beforehand and third and fourth, you know, those other sources, they're not getting it like the primary source gets it. They're just not. So, you know, and, and their cycles are stretched out. He could have someone that's fourth and fifth in place that it might take forever for them to start getting into a devalue phase because they ain't dealing with them like that. He could stretch it out because they're on the surface, but let them get upgraded to the primary source. And then they'll begin to see the narcissist in another light. But what happened to me one day is I finally got to a place where Excuse my French. I didn't give a fuck. I didn't give a flying fuck anymore. You know, I kept tabs before. You know how they say keep your enemies closer just to know what they have going on. I really didn't trust my narcissist because I believe he may be psychopathic as well. Um, you know, and you just don't know. It's so mischievous, so sneaky and devious. So, you know, I kind of just wanted to keep a little tabs, but it, it got to a point where I just didn't give a fuck. I didn't give a fuck what him or her was doing. And that was such a freeing moment. And I never looked back again on any of their social medias or anything. Like I just didn't give a fuck anymore. Like I see, you know, I knew what they both are low riders I'm like, yo, she's got to be just as fucked up in the head as him. Like, both of them are just disgusting. It makes me want to throw up. It makes me want to throw up because I'm looking at all the lies and the games that they're both, you know, presenting to the world very covertly. <laughs> and it's just sickening. And I got so, and here's the other thing. I got so busy in my purpose in life. I was, my life was so full that I didn't even want to take any of my precious energy to put further put in it to that, you know, but what I'm going to say is it's normal. We all go through that phase, but don't stay in that phase. If you're stuck in that phase for a prolonged period, you are certainly wallowing. We have to get ourselves from that phase into the phase of not giving a fuck. I want that for all of you. And I think if you start getting more into your life purpose and getting yourself busy, you will get into that stage a lot faster. You will get into that stage a lot faster because that's seemingly what happened to me. The busier I got in my life, the fuller I was in my life purpose, the more centered I became. I just didn't care anymore. It was like, whatever. Like I was just completely over it. The stage had ended for me. The stage had ended for me. And it can end for you too. But we're just, you know, a lot of times we get obsessive about this other person. That person is not better than you. Don't put yourself down like that. You know you you bent over backwards, chances are, for this narcissist. You was nothing but good to that narcissist. And they took it for granted. And they will do it to the next person as well. I don't care how nice he seems to be treating her on the outside. I was married to a narcissist. He was nice to me every time he fucked up because he wanted to get back on my good side. Sure, he went and bought me flowers and I could post this and that. Why was I getting those gifts? Those were I'm sorry gifts. <laughs> those were don't leave me gifts. So you don't know what's going on behind the scenes. So don't let your imagination run away with yourself. And let's work to get to the point where our life is so full, we don't even have time to look back on this fuckery anymore. Because it is a show. They are putting on a show because it's all lies. Come on now. All, all they're seeing is things that's on a surface that's not even true. They putting up happy pictures and they were probably arguing an hour before <laughs> but they got to keep that strong face you know some primary sources they they trying to keep on a strong face so them side chicks don't see them sweating 
You know what I'm saying? They don't want the, sh the side chicks and everybody else to see them sweat and be like, yeah, we told you about them. She's keeping on that strong face. And the narcissists, they always care about their image. They don't want people to think they can't hold relationships, even though anyone, <laughs> Stevie Wonder, could see the trail of, of messed up relationships between them. But once they find that long-term supply, she's just going through that, through that cycle over and over. And there are lots of side chicks and people that they're cheating with. <laughs> Might even be men. Seriously. Because narcissists are so stuck on supply and they're, look, look, they will do anything. <laughs> Don't put anything past them. But I hope this is helping someone, you know, move past this fat infatuation with the new supply and the new relationship and what's going on over there. What's going on over there? More fuckery, more bullshit, more drama. That's what's really going on over there. They're only going to um, post the nice stuff. And even the new supply, she slipped a few times, you know, and she started posting stuff about her relationship. I wish someone would take care of me for once. Uh, I do everything and no one does anything for me. You can give everyone everything and they won't appreciate it. <laughs> you know that's about the narcissist. Then she fell off of social media for a while because he probably checked her. Look, what are you talking about? What are you doing? She, and, you know, she probably didn't even have a real friend in her life to vent to, which is why she took to social media to put up these, uh, you know, indirect posts about the narcissist. Look, they're going through it. They're going through it, but they're going to fight hard to keep it as private as they can. But even in those situations, you see how they slip because she's still human. <clears throat> So I just really hope this helps someone. I know I went over here and I went over there in this conversation, but we're just sipping tea right now and we're talking friend amongst friend here, survivor to another survivor. Okay. But you can get to where I am because I literally don't give a fuck. I, and it's such a freeing feeling. God, it feels good to not feel those urges to not be so curious and stuck on that. Because they're both beneath me. Pieces of trash in my eyes. Like, not even worthy. Come on. So if this video resonates with you, go ahead and hit the like button, guys. And um, if you haven't yet, please feel free to supply, uh, subscribe to the channel. And um, I do upload videos quite frequently. And until next time, guys, take care.